Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. So today is a very exciting day. It's Cricut Announcement Day and one of those announcements is the Cricut Hat Press. If you want to see the other announcements, they're all up on my YouTube channel. Be sure to watch all the videos. But for the Hat Press, we're going to talk about it in this video. The Cricut Hat Press was sent to me by Cricut, however this video is not sponsored. In this video, we're going to open the Hat Press and talk about some of the features, talk about kind of how to use it, set up, that type of thing. And then I'm going to follow up with another video that does a review and shows me making some projects. In that video, I'm going to answer all your questions. So your job today is to watch this video, learn a little bit about the Hat Press, and then ask what questions you have about the press itself in the comment section below. So what questions do you have? What else do you want to know about the Hat Press? Let me know in the comment section and then I can answer those on my next video. So for now, let's dig into this box and see what all comes with the brand new Cricut Hat Press. So I haven't even opened this box myself yet, so you're going to check out this press with me. Let's open it up and check out what's inside. So first of all, it's a little packet, which probably has your, like your start guide and that type of thing. I'll set that to the side. Then we have the press itself. So the press, so you can see sort of how big it is in comparison with my hands. So it is fairly small, which I really like. Super lightweight, which I also love. And it does have a cord. The cord is attached, not removable. That might be important to some people. And then it has a base. So it's similar to like the Easy Press Mini, the regular Easy Press, in that it comes with its own base, where you can set it when it's on. I do love the bases on the Cricut products, I will say that. And then there's a roll of heat tape. So the Hat Press is launching with a strong grip heat resistant tape. So regular heat resistant tape doesn't always work around curved surfaces to hold things really still. So they're launching a strong grip version and you do get a small roll with the Hat Press. It's purple in color so you can tell the difference between it and the regular strength heat tape. Because you might not want to confuse those, you might not want to use the strong grip on some of your more delicate projects. So that was half the box. You open up the second half of the box and you have the other thing that's very important for the hat press. And that is the form. So I'm gonna open this, it's wrapped in plastic. We'll take a closer look at the form itself as well as the heat press. But before I do that, I do wanna say one thing about the form. There is an allergy warning right on the front. There is walnut shells inside of the form. If you're allergic to nuts or walnuts, you might want to consider that before purchasing the Cricut Hat Press. So the hat goes on the form in order for you to have something to press against. And walnut shells are a great material for something like this because they're firm and also hold heat well. So it was a great option for the form. You will see the allergy warning on this packaging and it is completely sealed. So if you did accidentally purchase it, you could put it back in and return it because of any allergy you may have. So now let me get the plastic off all this. Let's take a closer look at everything. First of all, when I opened the welcome packet, I found a let's get started that tells me how to activate. We will go over the setup of the Cricut Hat Press later in this video. There's also a guide that explains each of the buttons, but I will go over those in this video as well. Then within this package, there is a small piece of HTV that's already been cut into a star shape. So this is intended for you to use with your first project if you would like. You don't have to use this, but it is super convenient if you wanted to test your hat press out right out of the box. We will talk about blanks later in this video and what you can use with the Cricut Hat Press. Here's a closer look at that heat resistant tape that I talked about. Remember, this is gonna be a strong grip heat resistant tape. You wanna look for the purple that says strong grip. The regular heat resistant tape from Cricut is blue. This is just a small sample roll that comes with the hat press itself. You can purchase this separately in larger rolls. This is the package of strong grip heat resistant tape that you will look for when you purchase individually. So the box itself comes with a small roll, but this is the larger roll that you'll look for in stores and online. Here's a closer look at the Cricut hat press. So I have not plugged it in. I have not activated it yet. I wanted to give you a closer look before I did so. So this is the hat press in the base itself, and this is the hat press out of the base. You can see the approximate size in relation to my hands, and you can see how curved it is. The hat press itself has two buttons. 
The bottom button is both for power as well as for temperature. So you will press the power button to turn the machine on. And again, I have not activated this, so we're not gonna turn it on yet. You also press this button to pick the temperature. It has three temperature settings, and these three lines indicate those. So it is similar to the Easy Press Mini in that way. So when there are no lights, it's on standby mode. And then the lights on these three bars would indicate low, medium, and high temperature. If the lights on the press are green, it is heated up and ready to go. If it's orange, it's warming up. The next button is the go button. So this is what you would press when you wanna start the timer. But wait, there's not a timer button. So how do you set the time? Well, the Cricut Hat Press actually interacts with an app that's on your phone. And I'll show you a little bit of a sneak peek of that app today. And I'll do a full video on that app soon so you can see inside the app what it does and how it operates things like the Cricut Hat Press. If you wanna see what else it operates, be sure to check out my Easy Press 3 video. When you wanna turn the machine off, you just press the power button once again and hold it until the press goes off. So you press this once to turn it on, then press it to cycle through the heat settings, press and hold to turn it off. So this same button does all of those functions and the go is just to start the timer. And just one more thing, these lights will flash when counting down and we'll take a look at that in a minute. It does have an auto off after 13 minutes of inactivity. You don't have to worry about leaving it plugged in because it will turn itself off. Anytime you do have it on and heating up, I do recommend putting it in the safety base. This keeps it from heating your table up and keeps anything from getting burned. So those three heat settings, the Cricut Hat Press can handle HTV as well as things like infusible ink or sublimation. So it does get hot enough to handle those infusible ink projects. However, you will need special hats for the infusible ink if you wanna use that for your projects. So you wanna look for sublimation blanks for those projects. The good news is, is that Cricut is coming out with a line of hats. Stay tuned because I have a sneak peek of those hats for you in this video. But for now, I have a few just random hats that I pulled so we can put the hat press form itself to the test. So we're gonna fit these on the hat form and just see how the hat form works with a few random hats. So baseball caps, visors, a bucket hat, Let's see how this hat form works, how you put the hat on it, and what to look for when you get it on the hat form itself. And then we'll take a look at the Cricut hat blanks that you can use for sublimation and how they work with the hat form. And remember, I'm gonna do another video where I'm gonna put the hat press itself to the test. And in that video, I'm gonna make even more hats. So don't think that this is the only selection you're gonna have because there'll be some surprises in that video. So you wanna be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss those future videos. For now, let's put this hat form to the test a little bit. The other big part of this is the form itself because you are gonna need something to hold your hat while you press it. The form itself is fairly heavy. It is extremely firm, so it is a really great pressing surface. This is the top of the form or where you'll put your hat. If I turn the form over, you can see the bottom of the form and it has a convenient handle. You can use that to carry it, or you can use it as a handle to hold while you press a hat. So let's take a look at putting a hat on this form so you get a better idea of how it works. When you put a hat on the form, you do wanna make sure that any cardboard or packaging material is out of your hat. And then you also wanna flip out any sweatband. So like this one has a sweatband here, you wanna flip that out. And if you're able to open the back of the hat, that's best. This one, I just have it loose. Something like this visor, I would just open it up completely. Then you just wanna work your hat onto the form. You may be able to tell that this one is a pretty good and tight fit. You do want it to be tight across the front or wherever you'll be adding your design. Here's that form from the bottom. So you can see that the hat is all the way around. The handle's still exposed, so I can use the handle to hold as I press. When you get your hat on the form, you'll probably wanna tighten up in the back to make sure it stays tight and in place. Now let's put this bucket hat on the form as well. Again, I have the sweatband itself turned out. Then we can just start pulling the hat down over the form. We'll flip down that bill. I have the handle on the bottom. And for this one, I would probably pull as tight as I could 
across that front of the hat. Or if you were gonna put it all the way around, pull in each area in sections as you put your design in place. Here is the Cricut Trucker hat. So this front is polyester, so you can use infusible ink or sublimation on the front. They don't recommend infusible ink or sublimation on the bill because the heat distorts the bill itself. However, you can place HTV on the front or on the bill. The trucker cap has mesh sides as well as back, so you won't be able to add anything to the side or the back. They also have a gray baseball cap that has enough polyester content to add infusible ink or sublimation, and you can do that all the way around. However, same thing applies to the bill. So now it's time to activate your Cricut hat press. To do that, you will need some kind of mobile device. You'll either need a smartphone or a tablet. So iPad, iPhone, Android phone, Android tablet, and you're gonna wanna get the Cricut Heat app. This app will allow you to activate the Cricut hat press. So I went ahead and plugged the hat press in and opened up Cricut Heat. Once you open up Cricut Heat, you will need to log in with your Cricut account. If you don't already have one, you can easily create one for free. Remember, you don't have to have a Cricut machine to actually use the Cricut hat press. You can use it with any cutting machine or a sublimation printer or whatever. However, you would need a Cricut account to log into Cricut Heat. Then you just click set up in order to set up your press. At that time, you can go ahead and turn on the press so that your app can find it. It does connect wirelessly through Bluetooth, so there is no cord or port on the Cricut hat press to connect to your phone or tablet. You just need to allow it to connect via Bluetooth. Once it finds your press, you just click connect. Then it will connect to your hat press and start the registration process. So it will be registered to whatever email address you're logged in on, and you will need to accept the Cricut Terms of Use and click Activate. You may hear the press beep a few times as it's activating. That's completely normal. Just allow it to do its process. You want to leave the hat press turned on and within range of whatever device you're using, and don't close the app or turn it off or anything like that. It may take a few minutes to activate, but after it's done, your press will beep, and you'll see a success message on the app. So now that the hat press is activated, I can turn it on with the button, it'll start heating up, and we're ready to do a test press. I have two designs ready to be pressed. One's out of HTV and one's out of infusible ink, and I'm gonna press them both in this video to show what the hat press does. So a few things about designs. The maximum design that Cricut recommends is 2.25 inches by 4.25 inches. That's 4.25 inches wide. So that recommendation comes because of the size of the hat press as well as the fact that you have to move it back and forth. You should also keep your design half an inch from the bill of the hat. So you would, will wanna take that into account when you're picking a design as well as sizing it in Cricut Design Space. So you wanna cut your design and then weed it as I've done in both of these cases. And now these are ready to press. When determining the size for your design, I do recommend something like this flexible tape measure that's for sewing. That way you can get a really good idea of how your design will look on the hat by flexing it around the hat itself. So you can measure up as well as down. Just remember those maximum dimensions as well as how far it needs to be off of the bill. I'm gonna do the infusible ink version first on the Cricut blank. And you'll need, of course, your hat press and your hat form, the cut and weighted infusible ink, some butcher paper, lint roller, as well as that strong grip heat tape that we talked about. Now it does fit in a standard tape measure, but the roll is a little loose, but for my needs it does work. The width, however, does still fit. You might have noticed it was wider than their regular heat tape. So I'm gonna make this hat using the Cricut Heat app. Remember that your hat press can operate with the heat app and without, so we're gonna do that both ways. First, we're gonna use the heat app. First, I pull up Cricut Heat, the app on my phone, and then I pick hat press. I do wanna start a new project. Now, you can set a custom time and temperature and it does remember the last couple projects you did, so you can pick from those as well. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new project just so you can see. And the transfer material that I'm using is infusible ink transfer sheet, and I'm going to put that on the trucker hat. If this is your first time using the hat press, you will have some tutorials that come up, and I'm just gonna go through those. I'm gonna turn my hat press on, and the app immediately finds the hat press. And now I can click send settings to hat press. It sends the settings to the press and it starts heating up. Now you will notice with Cricut Heat, I can get an exact temperature on the hat press. 
If I'm using it manually, I'm gonna have a choice of three different settings. So in order to get that exact temperature, you would need to use the hat press with Cricut Heat. So now let's take a look at prepping our hat. So again, we'll wanna remove the inside, fold the sweatband of the hat out, and then start adding your hat to the hat form. Now you can go ahead and unbuckle this back if you need to, to get the hat onto the form and to get it tight. Feel free to use the handle to adjust the form inside the hat. Adjust until it's on the hat properly and then you can secure the hat tightly onto the form. So there's my hat on the form and it should be ready for pressing, but what you need to do is flip this over and check and make sure everything's tight. So you want everything tight across this front area where we'll be pressing. You don't want any wrinkles in your hat. Make sure the hat is smooth and that there are no air gaps between the hat and the pressing form. You want it to be as tight as possible and we are gonna press it with the surface we're gonna press on up. So set it on your table like this and with the hat form, it actually stands up on its own. Then I am gonna lint roll the hat surface. And then Cricut Heat is asking me to preheat. This just removes any moisture and I am going to press the go button and I'm gonna move it back and forth, preheating the area. And now it says we need to press for 90 seconds. And for infusible ink, I always let this cool before adding my design just to avoid any ghosting. While this cools, you can do things like trim the design fairly close. Remember, it needs to be half inch off the bill. So if you have excess carrier sheet at the bottom, go ahead and trim that off. And we're gonna curve this around this curved surface. So if you have any extra carrier sheet around the outside edge, feel free to trim that now. And you can even just put some little slits in your carrier sheet so it bends more easily when you put it on your hat. This is really crucial on larger designs. So the hat is pretty cool. My design is ready. So now I wanna locate it on my hat. This hat does not have a seam down the middle, but you can press over seams, so don't worry about the seams at all. And tape this down really, really well. So you saw that I had to move the hat press as I pressed, which means I will be moving it while pressing this infusible ink design. And I don't want the infusible ink itself to move, so I need to tape it down really well so nothing moves during the pressing process. You can definitely tape across the infusible ink. It will not hurt anything. So I got this design as tight as possible on my hat, and now we wanna add some butcher paper over the top. So this butcher paper will just protect if any ink comes out around my design. And so I'm gonna put the butcher paper in place and actually I can probably trim this a little smaller. Put the butcher paper in place with a couple more pieces of the Strong Grip heat tape, just so nothing moves. So now my hat is ready for pressing. So now we'll put the hat press in location, make sure it's covering the whole design, press the go button, hold the hat form from the side, and move the hat press back and forth for the entire time indicated on Cricut Heat. Once it's done, it does beep. Put it back in its base, and we are ready to remove this. So you can remove the design while it's warm. So we'll remove the butcher paper, and now let's remove our infusible ink. So now we'll just peel back to reveal our design on our hat. So this is infusible ink. However, you could do the same thing with sublimation. So the Cricut Hat Press does get hot enough to do infusible ink or sublimation. And you can see that it looks really, really good. No ghosting or anything, even though I need to move the hat press. So now let's use the hat press without the Cricut Heat app. Remember, you don't have to have the app to use it. You only have to use the app to register your device. So what we wanna do is turn it on by holding the center button. And now it is heating up and it's heating up to the first level. So there are three levels on the hat press. 
The first is low. You would use that with like sensitive materials or heat transfer materials that transfer between 255 and 295 degrees Fahrenheit. You would press it for about 60 seconds, typically. We wanna use setting two because I'm gonna use Cricut Iron On. This is used with most base materials or heat transfer materials and it transfers between 300 and 355 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, the timer will be for 60 seconds if you use this timer. Now the high, if I was to go up one more, so I just press this button to go up to high, and I'll go ahead and turn it back to medium. If I was to go up to high, that's used with infusible ink materials or heavy duty base materials. So it transfers between 360 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The timer on that highest is 90 seconds. Now remember, the only way to get the most accurate temperature setting is to use the Cricut Heat app. If you're using these, it will be within a range of heat. So I went ahead and added the hat to the hat press form in this case, and I am gonna remove the lint just in case, even though we're using iron-on. I did trim around my HTV and trim it close, and I cut slits all around it. So now I'm gonna use this seam down the center to locate my design. Now Cricut does recommend that when you have these holes in your hat that are kind of for ventilation that have stitching around them, that you don't put any design over those holes. So that looks like a pretty good location. Now, the back of your iron-on is sticky, right? But if I stick this down, it's just gonna pop right back up and not hold its shape at all. So I still recommend using that strong grip heat tape, even though we're using HTV. This will prevent anything from moving. So I'm gonna go ahead again and tape around this completely so that it's held down to my hat really well. You wouldn't necessarily have to use anything on this, like you know your butcher paper or parchment paper or whatever. However, you don't want the hat press to snag on, say, this tape and start lifting it up. So in order to get a smooth surface to run my hat press across, I'm gonna go ahead and lay a piece of butcher paper over this surface. Now you could definitely reuse this because it's not ink, it's just HTV. So once I remove it later, I'll just put it in a pile to reuse again on another project. So now everything is heated up because my hat press has green lights. So now I'm ready to add it, press that go button and hold on the side move side to side, just like we did with the infusible ink, and the timer will count down for 60 seconds. You don't wanna apply light pressure, so press down lightly as you move it across. Then it starts beeping when it's done, and we'll just remove that. And we do wanna let this cool completely because it is Cricut Iron On. And as it cools, I do like to kind of press on it a little bit just to make sure that that carrier sheet isn't lifting up at all. If it lifts up as it cools, it could lift the HTV off of your surface before everything is ready. Now, the hat form itself will be really hot, so this might take a little while to cool down. And I just keep pressing with my hands until it's pretty cool to the touch. Then we'll just peel back this butcher paper. Once everything is completely cool, go ahead and peel back the liner carefully. And there you have HTV on a hat. Now this hat is from Amazon, so it's not sold by Cricut at all. So you can use any hat blanks that will fit with the Cricut hat press. So that is Cricut hat press. I hope you enjoyed this look into the hat press itself. Now I'm gonna answer some questions I think you might have in kind of like a frequently asked question section. But if, I ha if you have a question that I have not answered, drop down in the comment section and ask anything you have. I will have a full review of the hat press later this week, and I have a ton of hats planned. So if you think it's cool that can you do HTV and infusible ink, just wait. I have so many hats ready to make just for you so we can see just what Cricut Hat Press can do. So now, frequently asked questions. So do you have to have the Cricut Heat app to use Cricut Hat Press? I think I showed you that you don't have to have it to use it because we did the hat with the iron on without Cricut Heat at all. So we just use the buttons on the hat press itself. However, you do need the Cricut Heat app to register your machine. So you will need a mobile device or a tablet of some sort and then install the free Cricut Heat app, register your machine, go through that startup process, and then you can use it with 
or without Cricut heat, whatever you prefer. Now with the Cricut heat, it does dial in your temperature a little bit better, as I showed, whereas if you use the three heat settings that are on the Cricut Hat Press itself, you'll be in a range of temperatures and you can't set an exact time. It will be the times that are programmed into the Cricut Hat Press. So if you wanna set that exact time and temperature, you would need to use the Cricut Heat app. So those settings that you can set in Cricut Heat app are great, but can you do that with a computer? No, you cannot. The Cricut Heat app is the only thing that works with the Cricut Hat Press to send those temperatures. So you can't hook it up to a computer to register it or to actually set the time and temperature. You have to have the Cricut Heat app to do that. So what kind of hats can you use with the Cricut Hat Press? So I showed you a Cricut hat and I showed you a hat that I just picked up off Amazon. Both of these worked great. And like I said, I have tons more hats planned. So if you want the answer to that question, you'll need to hit subscribe on YouTube, follow me, watch my future video, and see tons of different hats that I plan to make with the Cricut Hat Press. Let's just see what this can do. Now, can you use the Cricut Hat Press on other things that are not hats? Not to my knowledge as of this time. If I discover anything, I will definitely do a video on it. But for right now, I'm really thinking it's a hat press only. So as of the filming of this video, I'm gonna say Cricut Hat Press is only for hats. Do you have to purchase the strong grip heat tape in order to use the Cricut Hat Press? So I really do think that you're gonna need it to hold your infusible ink, your HTV, your sublimation print, whatever you're using, you're gonna need that strong grip to hold it still on the curved surface. I just don't think regular heat tape is going to be strong enough to hold it down on the curved surface as well as super still as you're moving the hat press back and forth. So I did do an infusible ink transfer sheet hat. And in my future video, I will do a hat with the infusible ink pens. If you're using the pens, however, just for the sake of this video and you're using the hat press, be sure to put like four layers of butcher paper on top of the pens before you use them. The pens bleed out a lot more and you don't wanna get any ink on the surface of your hat press. All right, so now you know everything there is to know about the Cricut Hat Press, but you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned to my YouTube channel to see even more with the hat press. So I have tons of other things planned and so you'll wanna stay tuned to see what all Cricut Hat Press can do. So the Cricut Hat Press is being announced today it will launch for sale at a later date. So Cricut did send me this hat press early so I could make videos for you, so I did not purchase it. So look for the hat press available for sale very, very soon on the Cricut website, Michael's website, Joanne's website. Look for the Cricut hat press and pick one up if you wanna make some hats. So if you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. Again, any other questions about the Cricut hat press, ask them in the comment section so I can answer them in the comment section or on a future video. And don't forget to hit subscribe on our YouTube channel if you don't subscribe already, because I'm gonna to have tons of content on the Cricut Hat Press and you don't wanna miss any of that. So thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.